I'm John Hopkins. Welcome back to my kitchen table. Today let's do fried chicken. I have 12 chicken tenders. Let's fry them up and have them be light and crispy and flavorful and moist. Uh, we'll concentrate mostly on the method. Uh, because people have such a wide variety of taste in terms of herbs and spices, although we will get into the herbs and spices. And here are the herbs and spices. Note that all of these are dried herbs and spices in their whole forms. Parsley, one tablespoon. Whole rosemary, one and a half teaspoons. Whole thyme, one and a half teaspoons. Whole sage, one teaspoon. Oregano, one teaspoon. Peppercorns, one tablespoon or less to taste. One tablespoon dried minced onion. And then the pre-ground spices. One tablespoon salt. Two tablespoons paprika. One teaspoon garlic powder. And two teaspoons baking powder. If you don't have dried minced onion, you can use onion powder, just a bit less. These amounts are for three cups of total breading mixture. Not all of it will stick to the chicken, but will have to be discarded because it was in contact with raw poultry. You need a generous amount because it tends to clump. I am almost a fanatic about not wasting food, but if you try to skimp, you will not get even coverage. Here you see the elements of the breading for the chicken tenders. I have one and a half cups of cornstarch, one and a half cups of corn flour. This is called masa harina in the stores. This is what you would use to make corn tortillas. I started using it to make chicken gluten free for my daughter who cannot have gluten. I've come to prefer it. Then there are the herbs that are pre-ground and the ones to be ground. Here we are for the grinding. The whole herbs and peppercorns are ready to go into the grinder. It's the same kind of grinder I use to grind coffee beans to brew. Not the same grinder, just the same kind. In the summer of 2019, you can get one like this for about $20 or less. Freshly ground herbs are best. Here I'm adding one and one half cups cornstarch and one and one half cups corn flour. Then the pre-ground spices go in. Then the freshly ground ones. Then mix thoroughly. I go to the flour spice mixture for a quick dusting and then into the buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, I use a mix of eggs and milk. This initial dusting allows more of the wet to stick to the chicken and then back into the mixture for a thicker coat. I press it on. I then put it onto the cooking spray coated sheet pan. They will sit there for at least 20 minutes. That allows the breading to come together. Some people like a much lighter breading. If you do, skip the patting it on step and put it in the oil immediately. I like the more substantial breading. There's a lot of flavor and crispness there. For the record, and this is important, as soon as I finished breading and moved the sheet pan to the frying station, I cleaned and sanitized the work area on the table. I rinsed everything that had come in contact with raw poultry and put it straight into the dishwasher. Part of the process is to make sure in advance that there is room in the dishwasher. I then washed my hands thoroughly. You can see what I will call my frying rig. You can see the baking sheet with the raw chicken on it and the thermometer that will allow me to monitor the temperature of the oil. Vegetable oil is good. Peanut oil is good. I use canola oil. You want something with a high smoke point. Do not use olive oil. Even if you could afford to do it, it has too low a smoke point. You can see here that the probe from the thermometer is clipped to the side of the skillet. 
Note also that it's only a third to a half full of oil. You do not want it bubbling over. On the other side of the skillet is another sheet pan with a cooling rack on it to drain the finished chicken and to keep it crispy by not letting steam build up under it. That sheet pan and rack have a second set of tongs on it to retrieve the cooked chicken. The ones that I use to put the chicken in would be contaminated. Always prevent cross-contamination with raw meat, especially with raw poultry. Okay, the oil is about 375 degrees. I want to cook as closely as possible to 350, but the chicken will drop the temperature of the oil quickly. I have 12 pieces. With tenders, four will fit at a time for three cycles of four each. Note that the oil, even at full bubble, does not reach the rim of the skillet. I do not want to fire in my kitchen or yours. I get the fourth piece in and set my timer for four minutes. When I turn them over, I will give them an additional three minutes. If I were doing boneless thighs, I would cut them to about this thickness and fry them for about the same time. For bone-in thighs, I would give them four minutes on each side and then onto a rack on a baking sheet and 30 minutes in a 350 degree oven. That way they are cooked through and all done at the same time. So, here we are at the finished product. 12 chicken tenders that are light and crispy with a flavorful breading that sticks to the chicken and does not fall off as you try to eat it. My wife would want you to know that she offered a pretty platter for this final look. I wanted to stick with the sheet pan and rack because it's been so important in keeping it from steaming on the bottom against a solid surface. I hope this video has been useful to you and will encourage you to make some good fried chicken for yourself.